-hmm. But I find it funny that you're going to write an article based off of survey information that isn't even correct. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever it is that you might be watching this. I'm Neil Winteregg with Matterhorn Business Development, here with Dr. Greg Winteregg, author, dentist, business consultant. We are here. Uh, it is morning for us. We're here this morning doing some filming, and uh, I have uh, a good article for us to talk about today. As usual. As usual. We it's count on you for different. this. I'm interested to hear your thoughts on it. I'm interested in this article probably for a different reason than you're interested in this article. Bring it on. So the article is in USA Today. It is in their talking tech section, I guess it's called, and it says Netflix price increases could cause some subscribers to downgrade cancel streaming service. Oh, I'm going to like this one. Right. <laughs> so I know you're going to like it for a particular reason. I'm going to like it for a slightly different reason because okay. when I'm reading this article, there's information that is being passed around as like, ooh, you know? Yeah. And it's from surveys that were done on people. And uh, I, surveys found, are good. I, I found the information to be quite pointless, but that's my own personal opinion. Okay, so it's your show, you, you get rolling. <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, Netflix, it says starting, actually, I guess it's next month or something. I, I, I actually didn't find it, but basically Netflix is going to go up by $2. Okay. So right now for it's scary, ooh, right now, uh, 10 99 a month gets you two HD streams and that's now going to be 12 99. And then the basic non HD plan is going to go from seven 99 a month to eight 99 a month. Okay. So we're okay. talking about two coffees off the McDonald's dollar menu or one coffee off the McDonald's right or a half menu. a Starbucks we are on very thin ice very thin ice here <laughs> they are about to go bankrupt as a result <laughs> of this now <clears throat> here's what I thought was interesting because when you start going around and reading the articles about this yeah a lot of it is being touted as like uh like bad news for Netflix, okay? Now, I, I'm not so sure. I think that Netflix is one of those things that people are just gonna keep paying for till the end of time. You know mm. what I mean? Like yeah. you're on it, you're just gonna keep using it, whatever. Yep. But what I thought was hilarious was that last month, this article is saying last month, the Diffusion Group, I, I don't know who they are, but the Diffusion Group surveyed nearly 1,300 adult broadband users who subscribe to Netflix about potential price hikes, splitting them into three different groups and asking about monthly increases of either $1, $3, or $5. But the increase is for $2. <laughs> so I don't know if they did this before they knew what the price increase was going to be or if they're just trying to gauge the waters. Mm -hmm. But I find it funny that you're going to write an article about based off of survey information that isn't even correct. Right. So what they found about the $1 increase is that uh, the vast majority, 84%, said they would pay the eight extra cost and keep using Netflix. So 84% don't even care about a dollar. Okay. okay. When it came to the $3, 62% said they would stick with Netflix and 22% said that they would switch to a lower price plan. And then 16% said that they would cancel the service. So if they increased by... $2, mm -hmm. they're going to lose 16% of their business, supposedly, okay, okay based off the 1,600 people. Mm -hmm. Then it goes into the information about uh, the $5 increase. And it says even more people are likely to, you know, cancel if they downgrade to $5 a month. But, but they didn't have a number, just more likely. Right. They just said more likely. Okay. Okay. But here's where I think it gets, it gets interesting. Okay. So while the survey did not specifically ask about a $2 price increase, mm -hmm. sort of important if you're going to write a news article, in my opinion, right. um, the responses to a $1 and $3 price hike gives you a good idea of the likely consumer response, the, diffus the Diffusion Group president told USA Today. Another one that I thought was very funny, and then we'll start talking about yep. it, okay? A different survey company uh, conducted on Wednesday the Streaming Observer website and Mindset Analytics. It says nearly one-fourth, 24% of the 600 U.S. adult Netflix subscribers, 607 U.S. adult Netflix subscribers who participate in online survey said they might cancel Netflix. So I'm just, who comes up with a survey question where you get a, <laughs> I might, or maybe? It doesn't make any sense. Why survey somebody? I agree. I agree. And, and as a CEO, uh, I'm supposed to make decisions off of survey questions that aren't giving me the actual data. Right. I mean, so they, I could see where you do a survey for one, three and $5. Sure. All right. 
Now, we don't know because the, the article may not have all of the data. We don't know what was going on behind the scenes sure. at Netflix. But then, OK, so we're going to do a two dollar increase. Well, now we're going to run another survey on two dollar increase and four dollar increase or whatever. But right no, your point is well taken. This is uh, like why make a business decision or why? I mean, I'm sure Netflix isn't taking the survey of. 1300 people into account for their entire multi-million dollar platform right. I, I doubt and netflix even cares or looked at this <laughs> they probably did their own survey but right. i'm just i just find it funny that we're, we're sitting here comparing how smart it is or how smart it isn't for a company right based off of survey results of a 1300 people which is probably 0. 0.0000001 right of the actual users of netflix yes and then two we're basing it off of a survey question that is irrelevant Yes. Agreed. One, three, and five is irrelevant to two dollars. Okay, and here's one thing I'm not clear on. So yeah. so did Netflix actually do the survey or did these this is this an independent group that did the survey it sounds like without it's an, Netflix knowing? It sounds like it's an independent group. Like I said, because it says all it says in the article okay. is that facing an increase of $1 more per month, as many as 16% of Netflix subscribers are likely to either downgrade to a lower tier plan or cancel the service altogether, finds a recent survey by the Diffusion Group. Where the Diffusion Group is or how it, whatever, that's the first time that it's brought up. But again, it's just, it's talking about facing an increase of $1 more per month. The yeah. main plan is not going up, it's going up by $2. Right. The subsidiary plan is going up by one dollar. So I guess the point is, is that there the article is at least making a big deal about this when the truth is, is that that's a one dollar increase is just a very small portion, I'm sure, of the actual Netflix right. subscribers. And uh, only 16 percent said that they would downgrade or cancel. So it's not really it's a very small statistical percentage. Right. But I just find it interesting uh, when you do have a company as big as Netflix. Mm -hmm. Survey information is very important, but I think having the right information is what's more important. These Agreed. questions to me, I mean, why, why do a survey if you're going to get maybes and don't knows and could be's that that's completely useless information? Well, I'm going to play devil's advocate here. And I think this group, the diffusion group probably mm -hmm. just got some people on the phone. They made a bunch of calls. Are you a Netflix subscriber? And then, well, it says they I, did, they I don't know did that they person, were commissioned by Netflix. It doesn't sound like they were. This right. is their own thing. So then, I don't know. This sounds a little bit um, like they're trying to dramatize something and, you know, they can, right. you know, whatever, as far as a PR move for them. But let's just kind of like talk about raising your fees, raising your prices, because this kind of segues over into that. Yeah. First of all, I... I can't imagine Netflix making this kind of a decision, just a bunch of people sitting around a boardroom and saying, I think we should raise it by $2. Uh, they're a lot smarter than that. I'm really impressed with their group. I mean, they start off with a subscription service for other movies. We started with their DVD service in 1998, Yeah, we did, they were arriving in the mailbox. Yeah, they were in the mail. Right. And so these guys get it. Like Blockbuster didn't get it. No. So Blockbuster thought they were a DVD a place you could go buy DVDs and then they got beat out by Redbox and Netflix and everything else. Netflix rules because they're pivoting. They realize that their purpose is to entertain. Right. Now, their entertainment has changed. Yeah, this now model, a lot of what they're doing is their own production. Too. This model's incredibly more expensive. Yes. They're hiring big names. They're making series. So before somebody else does all the production and they give me this product and then I make money. And then off they of pay it. them a, a royalty or yeah, a royalty or whatever, whatever goes back. It is. Yeah. Now it's like this is incredibly expensive. I'm impressed that they can do what they're doing right now with a two dollar increase on the subscription. I agree. I mean, it's going to cost you and me twenty four dollars a year, and their programming has definitely gone up by way more so yep. i'm really impressed with that and and i know as a business owner you kind of vibrate a little bit when it's time to raise your prices and i've talked to many business owners oh i haven't had a price increase in five years okay well then you've had a decrease in your <laughs> living right because the cost of living doesn't go backwards every year it goes up generally one two four percent yep so how can you not raise your prices but then the vibration is, oh, I'm going to lose all my customers. No. And in Just, reality, they're going to lose 16%. Max. Max. According to this one survey. According to this survey. 16% right. for a $2 price increase. 
with a much good. better product. And let's be and, honest, most of those people are probably not going to cancel who said they were going to. And but right, and and here's here's the thing that business owners oftentimes forget. So let's say the sub subscription is ten dollars. The company is not going bankrupt. The company is paying its bills. Obviously, they've been able to expand, et cetera, et cetera. The $2 increase then at that point is profit. Right. So if you're basically doubling your profit. Right. Potentially. And I don't have, you know. We don't know whatever. their We don't know their but. financial scene. But if all the expenses stay the same and you raise your fees like this, that's all profit. Right. Now, probably what they will do is raise their fees, which gives them more money to go get bigger actors and do right. more grand productions. But I don't know. Somebody who's going to. I think everybody freaks out about raising fees way more so than they need to. Than they need to. Right. Exactly. Like, I'm sure the price of milk has probably gone up in the last year or two. And I didn't, you know, throw a tantrum because I didn't right. even notice it. Right. Honestly, without an article like this, I wouldn't even have known that my Netflix went up. <laughs> you wouldn't have noticed. I don't look at my credit. Like, How much was Netflix this month? Mm, you know, like. Right. It's on auto debit. I'm like, right. dude, I don't even know how right. long I've been subscribed. I don't know what credit card it goes to. It just comes off every month. And when I log in, it works. So this is actually a pet peeve of mine. And yeah. I just want to take two minutes. Okay. So because dentists are the worst. I, I mean, the worst about raising fees. They'll give something away. So I did this whole spreadsheet last year. What would happen if a dentist raised his fees by 10%? Mm -hmm. And everybody's going to get mad at me because you are, it's already expensive going to the dentist. We can make a whole other video on that one. Yeah. There's many reasons it's not, why. But. It's, yeah. <laughs> so you raise your fees by 10%. All right. The profit goes up by like, I don't remember the exact numbers, 25%. Mm -hmm. Profit goes up because mm -hmm. everything, all the, all the numbers stay the same. Right. We're not going to say the staffs get a raise and all that. That's too many variables. One variable, you raise... Your fees by 10%, the profit goes up by, it was 25%. It was something significant. Right. You say, well, I'm going to lose all of my patients. Okay, we know that's not right. Right, we're not going to lose all of your We're business. not going to lose them all. Right. Okay, now you may lose some. Right. So then the next calculation, the next row of figures was, well, if, if let's say you're making $10,000 a month in profit. Yep. Okay, and the increase was going to take you to whatever, 12,000, 13, whatever. Yeah. If you were happy with ten thousand dollars of profit and you raised your fees, how many patients could you lose and still make ten thousand? Right. Because Netflix you're still, is going to be fine at sixteen percent. They're going to be fine. And we know those people aren't going to cancel anyway. Get this. I was blown away. I showed two other people my calculations. I couldn't believe this. Right. A dentist could raise his fees by ten percent, and let's say the number is ten thousand. If he was happy with ten thousand dollars of profit, he could lose one third of his patients. And still be fine, which and he's not going to lose one third. But even if he did, if you want to throw more variables, he wouldn't work so many days. It's true. Uh, he could afford to pay the staff more. I mean, just yeah. there was all kinds of other. So that was just shocking. I think people I, get really stuck and fixated into one thing. I had a recent conversation with a, with a lady uh, locally uh, that I do some business with. And um, she hasn't raised her fees for her services in five years. And wow. I'm like, why haven't you done that? Wow. Oh, well, you know. People are on a fixed income and this and that. And I'm like, okay, um, do you have a line of people waiting to do your services and waiting to get in here? Pretty much. Like if there's a cancellation, they're like, yeah, if you can't make it today, no problem. I'll fill it. Cause I, I had to right. cancel an appointment once. And I said, right. I'll pay the appointment fee. Cause I felt bad. Right. She's like, don't worry. Like there's already people waiting to get in to see this place. I'm like, you have to raise your fees you have because to. your overhead has gone up in the last five years. Plus you have enough business to where if you lost 10%, you wouldn't even notice. Right. Like you're already too busy. Right. So increasing your fees just keeps you, it's part of economics. It's, it's, it's part of business. Increase in demand. It's increase part of business. In, 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 but we get so fixated on the numbers. Yep. And on not looking at the bottom line so much. Well, and honestly, it's fear driven. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, it's fear driven. You're told and, that if you increase your fees or you do something right. more expensive than the guy across the street, then nobody's going to come. And, see you. and the only thing upsetting to me about this article is that it's got too much fear laid into it. A little it's bit. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's like, oh, Netflix, you know, they're going to yeah. are they going to go bankrupt because they raise their their. Well, price some people might cancel two McDonald's coffees, <laughs> put the company at risk over two McDonald's. I mean, that's yeah. that's half of a Starbucks coffee. 
Yeah, <laughs> that's why I said earlier. I was like, have a Starbucks coffee. Who cares? You know, it's not that big of a deal. People want your service; they're going to buy right. their service. But I, like you said, it's fear driven. Yeah, and we we take these price increases. Yep. Way outside, like just way too seriously in business. Absolutely. Where everybody's. Uh, you've been told that you have to hold on to what you have. Yep. And I feel like if you do a good service and you talk to people, you don't have to hold on to anything. They're going to keep coming to you no matter what. Absolutely. I mean, how Absolutely. many clients have we had who have had a more expensive service than the guy across the street, but people still come in and see you and do better? Absolutely. It has nothing to do with your environment and your area Agreed. or your, really even your price. It has to do with your quality of service and Agreed. what you can do. So raising your fees is not necessarily a bad thing. Now, if you aren't making money and the quality of your service is terrible and you say, I'm going to increase in fees to make money. Okay. That's backwards. Yep. That's backwards. Totally. You're not going to make, now you're in money. trouble anyway, now, but yeah. it, what, it you're had in nothing to do with to the begin price. With. Right. It had to do with the product and the service. You didn't know what you were doing. Right. But see, I think people right. get that idea where they have to, to make more money. They have to charge more fees. Exactly. And that's not, that's not what we're talking about here with a price increase. It's exactly. like, as your quality of your service continues to increase, mm -hmm. your overhead will also increase because you're delivering a more quality product of whatever it is that you use. You can charge a premium price for that. Mm -hmm. And that's totally fine. There's and here, nothing wrong with that. Here's just the final point that I'd like to make yeah. is that if, if the business isn't growing, if the, if the, if the execs aren't pushing the business to grow and they're just worried about hanging on to this many customers, You're in this is a big deal. But there's a lot more problems going on than the price of the product or service. Yes. You always have to be expanding. You always have to be pushing the edge of the envelope. You always have to raise your prices every year. Yeah. One, two, three percent. You always have to raise your prices every year. And when I did my dental example, it's kind of like, oh, an outrageous number, 10 percent. Let's just let's just see. Right. Which is and, more, more than it would ever be. But right. But yeah. it, but just to your point, somebody not raising the price of their service for five years that's you're just, hurting yourself. Yeah, you're just killing like yourself, your family. Business. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. We're, no. we're pretty much on the same page yeah. with this one. I just thought one of the most interesting things was just yeah. the, the survey information that's being passed around. Yeah. I mean. I well, and then to, to take that data and make it sound like Netflix is going to go under. It's right. Like, and it's not even about the price increase. No. That not is at happening. All. So if you need help figuring out what your market is and you need real survey questions, we'll write some for you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and <laughs> you're done that lots. something that you can use. We've done that a lot. Yeah, something that you can use. But the, the point is, is that uh, you can control your income, you can control your business. And if you deliver a quality product and you have people who are in demand for your service, there's nothing wrong with raising your fees to be commensurate with the quality of your product and to be able to make more money and provide a better service. Yep. So, and just so I can throw in another yeah. plug for my new book. Absolutely. <laughs> Wait, you're writing a book? Oh, you for ah. I forgot to tell oh, you. Okay, good. <laughs> so, my new book, Fun at Work, is going to be released very soon. Uh, to get a pre release copy, go to funatworkthebook.com. Guess what? There's an entire chapter on profit, and I get into this entire discussion uh, in more detail than what we've been able to, to do in today's video. That wraps up another episode of the Business Newsroom. Give us a like, subscribe. Uh, we're going to be turning out a lot of these videos talking about more news. So actually, I'd love to hear from you on any topics you think we should tackle next. Please go ahead and leave them in the comments below. Send us an article. Yeah, send me an article. Send it to Neil. That way I don't know it. That's right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> also, go to our website. Go to Matterhorn.training. Take our sales and communication test and see how well you stack up against everybody else with your ability to sell your product and communicate to your prospects. We'll see you next time at the Business Newsroom.